Hi again, friends. It's me, Miss Christina, and I'm returning to you with a few more chapters of Detective Gordon's The First Case. We've read a few times, and we are on to chapter seven. And I'll show you what we just read to refresh your memory. Our friend Buffy has done some digging to help with solving the case. She checked out the layer, the hole, of who she thinks is taking all the nuts. The most dangerous and cunning animal of the forest. And so now she's returned to the detective to talk it over. So chapter seven is called The Police Think and Stamp. So we'll continue with our story. When Buffy returned, she reported to Detective Gordon. She sat on the visitor stool and the detective was in the swivel chair. He didn't interrupt her once. He just nodded and made notes on his paper. The fox the detective said at last. Yes, said Buffy, the most dangerous and cunning animal. Let's go and get him now and put him in prison. How, how do we get him? Asked the detective. Excuse me. We take the pistol and the baton. I can manage the pistol, said Buffy, but not the baton. No, said the detective, not the pistol. He swiveled in his chair. It squeaked. May I sit for a moment? Oh, may I sit for a moment in the swivel chair? Asked Buffy. No, said the detective. This is the chief's chair. But we can move the visitor stool over so we're both sitting on the same side. They carried the stool over. They both sat with their elbows on the table, heads in hands. They kept thinking until the detective stood up. It's time for warm milk and lunch cakes. He took four cakes from the final tin, oat cakes with a bit of candied orange. The lunchtime cakes were very good, they agreed. The detective said, Buffy, you're young, quick, and good at running, climbing, and tracking. I'm very proud of you. Thank you, said Buffy. But, the detective continued, you must understand that I'm old, 19 years old. Woo! The detective pretended not to hear. He patted his belly and grabbed a thick roll in both hands. I'm perhaps not so limber, he said, but I have experience. I once had to deal with the fox. He was being very unpleasant to the mice and rabbits in our forest. I was the one who got him to move to another forest. How, said Buffy with admiration. It's perhaps my most important case. I'll tell you about it another time. But right now I can tell you that however horrible the fox may be, he definitely hasn't climbed trees or stolen nuts. Buffy was silent. The detective showed her the list he had made. The animals who could be suspects were in one column. Beside it, the crosses were placed here and there in more columns. If a particular animal had a cross in the first column, it meant this animal likes nuts. A cross in the second column meant can climb trees. The third column meant makes tracks in snow. The detective pointed to Fox. It had just one cross, makes tracks in snow. The fox doesn't eat nuts and can't climb. The fox is eliminated. Experience, you see. The detective kneaded his belly roll. Hedgehog, said Buffy. What if it's hedgehog? The detective shook his head and pointed to the list. It read, sleeps in winter. But who has three crosses? asked Buffy. The detective looked carefully. Hmm. Mice and squirrels. Squirrels? But that's who. There are many squirrels in the forest. Right now, all are suspects, said the detective, taking out the stamp. He placed it in the middle of the paper. He checked carefully, moved it a little, then moved it back. 
and pressed. Clud dunk. Buffy stood up eagerly. May I stamp? No, not yet. Stamping is not allowed until you've received full police training or until you work out how to solve this case. The detective said, peering down his nose at her. Can you give me full police training? Buffy asked. Teach me how to catch wretched thieves and... Just hear what I say, said the detective, and do as I do. They sat and thought, each resting their head on one hand. While the detective changed hands, so did Buffy. When the detective sighed, Buffy sighed too. <sighs> the detective fetched two extra lunch cakes and placed them in the middle of the desk. We can have them when we come up with something. Both frowned deeply. The detective appeared to close his eyes and Buffy scratched behind her ear. She badly wanted a cake. Her slim little arm crept across the table. The, detective, the detective's eyes were closed. She was about to snatch one when the detective lifted his finger and said, I see you. Just then, Buffy had an idea, and she brightened. She pulled the detective close and whispered in his ear. Yes, said Detective Gordon. You've come up with a fresh new idea. That's what we'll do. Now you may stamp. Buffy took the stamp from the drawer and placed it carefully on the paper. And even more carefully than the detective... She moved it a smidgen to the right and then a smidgen to the left and she pressed Cladunk! She smiled proudly. Bravo, said the detective. I am very proud of you. Chapter eight. Hmm. So the sign on this building says police. It's still snowy outside. Hmm. Chapter 8 is called One Trap, One Thief. Detective Gordon thought Buffy's idea was excellent. It had something to do with the cakes on the table and with someone who closed their eyes and someone who was peckish. In other words, it was a trap. First, they had to borrow 20 nuts from various mice and squirrels. Then they would make a beautiful nut pyramid beside the path in the forest. They would write a sign. These nuts belong to Buffy. Taking these nuts is absolutely forbidden. Mm. The significant thief might fall for the trap. He might sneak up and take off with the nuts or she might or they. But then Detective Gordon and Buffy would sneak after them and see where the nuts were hidden they would catch the thief or thieves. They would get the squirrel's nuts back. Buffy was so pleased with her idea that she giggled constantly and they planned. Buffy was so pleased with her idea that, oh, uh, they made one or two small changes. We can't borrow the nuts, said the detective. In case the mice and squirrels become suspicious, we'd be borrowing them from the very types who could be our thieves. They might not fall for our trap. We can borrow them from another forest in another police district, said Buffy. We could make a nut pyramid right outside the police's station window. Then I can quietly drink tea and look out the window, said the detective. No, for cat's sake, said Buffy, no thief would dare to steal right outside a police station. The detective was a little hurt. After all, he was the chief of police. And cat's sake is the worst thing a mouse can say. Buffy noticed the, detec the detective's face clouding over. But... But 
That's a very good idea, she said. We can place the pyramid a tiny bit further away so you can still see it from the window, and then I'll make tea for you. The detective was a little happier. So they took a toboggan and went to another forest. Not the one where the fox lived, but in the other direction, where they found a family of field mice who could lend them 10 top quality hazelnuts. They pulled their heavy load back home again. The detective wrote the sign. He thought for a moment of putting the stamp on it. That might be going a bit too far, Still, it was a very fine stamp with the words Detective Gordon on it. There, like that, Gladunk. In the middle was a royal crown. The detective didn't actually know what the crown was doing there, but it seemed powerful and no one had questioned it. Buffy stacked the nuts into a beautiful pyramid. A little way from the police station, the detective pushed the sign into the snow. The sun went down. It began to get dark. It was the perfect time for thieves. Dark enough for them to dare to steal, but light enough for them to read the sign and understand that these nuts belonged to someone else. The detective sat in the window. He was tired. He had been, it had been unusually hard work pulling the nuts on the toboggan, perhaps because he hadn't done, done it before. While the water was still simmering in the kettle, he fell asleep. His head dropped, drooped, and hit the windowsill. But with Buffy there, he couldn't admit that it had happened, so he cleared his throat slightly <clears throat> and swept up a little earth that had fallen from the pot of geraniums. That's flowers. Oops. There was going to be a bump on his forehead. As they drank tea at the window, he perked up. They ate their evening and night cakes, the dark ones with black currant jam. Mm. It is good to have different cakes at different times, said the detective. Police work goes on all hours of the day and night. But according to the type of cake, you know what time it is. Buffy stowed that away in her memory because she enjoyed police work and wanted to be a detective one day, maybe even chief of police. Then Detective Gordon fell asleep again, but this time he had leaned back because he didn't want to hit his bumped head again. He woke to hear himself snoring, embarrassing, Buffy didn't seem to have noticed, but she was smiling to herself. <clears throat> I have a slightly sore throat, said the detective, in case she had heard any strange sounds. He was about to fall asleep again, but this time to one side. He didn't get there because Buffy cried. There's a thief! And so it was. Out in the night, a dark figure was picking up nuts from the pile. There they are. Mm, that says Buffy's. Quick as a wink, the detective was on his feet. He even managed to answer Buff Buffy before she asked the question. No, not the pistol. And that's all we'll read this time, my friends. Next time we'll do not chapter nine and chapter 10. And here's a little peek. Oh my, there's a clue there. Maybe you can guess who is trying to take Buffy's nuts that are a trap. And we will see what happens next. The next time we read Detective Gordon. Thanks for joining me friends and I'll see you next time. Bye.